What was it like growing up in Nigeria and how has that experience helped you both personally and professionally in this country? Very, very good question. Thank you so much. Um, you, you, you may be familiar with that proverb that it takes a village. Yes. Um, and that's really, it's not just a proverb, but something that you live with um, growing up uh, in terms of you grew up in a communal environment where when your parents were not around, the neighbors, your parents, friends were very important in helping to shape your life by watching out for you, making sure that you behave right and you treat other people well. Respect for elders were always very important, um, whether, you know, not just people who are older in terms of age, but people who are just generally older than you. And that translates into everything else in life. Uh, you respect people when you see them. Um, growing up in Nigeria, was also one, especially my tribe, Yoruba tribe, education was very important. Um, my father, of course, uh, was a professor of mental health, um, but I have my older brother who is a professor, lives in Botswana, I, and I have um, three younger sisters who have their own PhDs too. Uh, one is a medical doctor, one is an attorney, and they both have their own practices, and two are university professors. I am tempted to ask you what is Greensboro's single biggest challenge, but in other interviews, you seem to point out it's not just one challenge, it's several different ones, and you have to address them all together. And we will talk individually about some of these challenges over the course of the next few minutes, but I was wondering if you could t describe the thread that runs through all these challenges. What is it? And how do you go about addressing it? It's about having a vibrant, how can you have a vibrant, thriving, functioning city? Uh, so I was citing as an example, we just landed the Toyota EV battery plant and yeah. then the BOOM supersonic um, project. That's huge. And those by themselves will generate over 3,000 jobs. The challenge for us though will be this, the pipeline for you know, workforce and talented and skilled um, employees, we have them, but how do we get them to those places without a very good transportation system? Not only that, housing. Those opportunities will result in people moving to Greensboro. How do we make sure that people who live here, who have made this city their home for the last several years, are not priced out of market because new people are coming from bigger markets and can afford? Um, not only that, making sure that areas where you have food desert today or where you don't have full service banks. Um, people have to drive so far to get to those things. Making sure you have a more fast and frequent and reliable transit system. All of these things connect together. People in this area love their cars. I see a lot of mostly empty city buses uh, rolling around the city and I'm aware that the city's 2040 comprehensive plan includes the words becoming car optional. What must Greensboro do to encourage more people to utilize public transportation in a way that will help us become more environmentally sustainable? Neil, in a city where you can pretty much drive to wherever you want to go yeah. within 15 to 20 minutes, if the bus is going to take twice that amount of time, you don't want to take the bus, right? Exactly. You're either going to call Lyft or Uber no. or drive to get there. So it's got to be beyond traffic congestion or beyond, you know, getting to a place quicker. It's got to be the convenience of it. And it's got to be offered as an option that you can leave your car at home because this allows you to be able to text and talk while, yes. you, while you take public transit. There's got to be a safe element to it. But it's also got to be not just public transit, but how can we also, in association with public transit, make it easier for people who are riding their bicycles or people who choose to walk on you know, um, in green ways, still be able to get to do different things that they need to do. That's how you create a car option, a city, investing in different modes of mobility. Um, and then I would like a situation where our bosses don't have to necessarily come downtown to get people to where they need to go. Most people will transfer one time. If they yeah. have to transfer twice, they are likely not going to use it. That may account for why we don't see a whole lot of people on buses. So I'm going to definitely be digging deeper into our uh, Greensboro Transit Agency and see how we can solve some of our challenges. One of the things that I will hope to do in the next few months is really elevate the profile of that agency within the city uh, so that we can address its issues specifically that will allow us to be able to move our people uh, forward 
in terms of the need for public transit. Downtown area. Yes. Tanger Center, hotels, lots of great places to eat and businesses downtown. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, what is downtown missing and how can city government address this? Downtown is really doing, at least based on what I remember last time I was in Greensboro, uh, before now, downtown is in a better shape than it was before now. But are there things we can do better? Yes. I still see a lot of surface parking lots. Uh, whether they are empty because a lot of people are working from home or not, that's still to be determined. How can we leverage some of this to be able to build and attract more people who want to live downtown? We don't just want offices and hotels downtown. We also want people to live downtown because that's how you create that vibrancy 24 hours. Uh, the restaurants are there. So if people choose to live downtown or close enough, they don't have to go too far to find restaurants. Could making it more pedestrian friendly downtown be in it? Could, could you essentially close off Elm Street making that just a pedestrian walkway and wouldn't that facilitate things? Absolutely. That's, um, I've walked on Elm Street. I've gone there to eat. I've thought about it as a trolley corridor. Yes. I've thought about it as a walkable corridor. But then you have to do this in partnership. I got to know what the vision of downtown Greensboro is for Helm Street. We also got to look at what the businesses are thinking of because once you close a street, of course, um, to, 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 to vehicular um, traffic, it's going to generate a lot of concerns. But research has shown that when you encourage pedestrian accessibility, retail businesses go up. And so workability uh, will be very important. Final question. Describe the type of city you want Greensboro to be under your watch. What is your message? I want Greensboro to be a place where people who live here today feel like they don't need to leave this city in order for them to continue to thrive, whether their businesses or their students or their residents. But I also want Greensboro to be a place of choice so that if an American wakes up in the United States today and they think of five, 10 cities they would like to relocate to, they choose Greensboro because of its arts, culture, and entertainment, because of its seven colleges and universities, but just because it's a welcoming place and has an affordable lifestyle and a place that's three hours away from the beach, three hours away from the mountain. That is just a perfect environment you want to be and you want to raise your family.